Identify these vertebrae. They are cervical vertebrae. What is the feature you use to identify them specifically? They have foramen transversarium. Show me, what are typical and what are atypical? This is a typical cervical vertebra and this is also a typical cervical vertebra. This is also a typical cervical vertebra. And this is uh, a typical cervical vertebra. It is known as atlas. This is a uh, atypical cervical vertebra. It is known as axis. This is also a typical cervical vertebra. It is uh, the seventh cervical. What are the atypical features of seventh cervical vertebra? This is seventh cervical vertebra. The special features about it is it has a long spinous process. Uh, which is non bifid but other cervical typical cervical vertebrae has short and bifid spines also it c7 vertebra is known as vertebra prominence because its spine is clearly palpable on running the finger downwards along the vertebral crest its uh, foramen transversarium does not uh, transmit the vertebral artery it only transmits the vein. What is a cervical rib? It is an extra rib which is attached to the transverse process of the seventh cervical vertebra. It may articulate with first rib or attached to the first rib by a fibrous strand. Okay, what is the clinical significance of it? It can cause a pressure on the lower trunk of the brachial plexus producing pain down the medial side of the forearm and wasting of small muscles of the hand. Tell me about the nerve supply of the small muscles of hand. The inner muscles and lateral to lumbricals are supplied by the median nerve. Except these muscles, all the others are supplied by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. They are hypothenar muscles, medial to lumbricals, adductor pollicis, dorsal and palma interosseal. What is ulnar paradox? Usually a nerve injury occur more proximal has worse clinical features than distal injuries. But in ulnar paradox, the claw hand is much more obvious in the ulnar nerve injury in wrist than in the injuries occur in elbow. Okay, tell me the reason. When the ulnar nerve is damaged at the elbow, the ulnar part of the flexor digitorum profundus is paralyzed. Its effect on flexing the interphalangeal joints is lost, so clawing is less. The branch to the flexor profundus is given at the forearm, so the injuries of the wrist joint won't paralyze flexor profundus, so marked flexion of terminal phalanges occur. Tell me about the origin of the ulnar nerve. It is a branch of brachial plexus. It arises from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. What can you say about the relation between brachial plexus and axillary artery? The three cords of brachial plexus lie posterior to the first part of the axillary artery. When considering the second part of the axillary artery, the cords of brachial plexus arrange around the axillary artery according to their names. The medial cord it lies medial to the second part of axillary artery and posterior cord lies posteriorly and lateral cord lies laterally. The branches arising from the corresponding cord also keep that relation with axillary artery. What are the contents of axilla? Axillary artery and its branches, axillary vein and its branches, cords of the brachial flexors and its branches, adipose tissue, axillary lymph nodes. What do you know about the lymphatic drainage of breast? Most of the lymph of the breast drain into the axillary lymph nodes along the axillary tail to the pectoral lymph nodes and through clavipectoral fascia to the apical lymph nodes. Some lymph vessels pass to the parasternal lymph nodes along the internal thoracic artery. Explain about the spreading of a breast cancer. A carcinoma of one breast can be spread to the opposite breast because there are communications between two breasts across the midline. Carcinoma can be spread to the liver from the communication of lymph vessels with those in abdomen. It can also be spread to lymph nodes in the root of the neck and can spread to vertebrae 
and to the brain via communications with vertebral venous plexus. What are the nerves in risk to damage when performing radical mastectomy? Long thoracic nerve, thoracodosal nerve, intercostobrachial nerve. What happens when the long thoracic nerve is damaged? It may result in abnormal protruding of the scapula due to the paralysis of the serratus anterior muscle. It is also called as winged scapula.